Hi guys, just Jen here, Cleveland Street Novelties. Ah, look, it's doll mail day, one of my very favorite days, and I'm so excited because finally, Series 33 arrived, the Mulan Morgue, and I just can't wait to dive into them. Seeing their great outfits, knowing that it was a little cross between Moulin Rouge and then the Grand Guignol made me so excited. Um, I hope you guys know a little bit about the Grand Guignol. I'll tell you a little bit about them as we go through, but here they are. Fabulous little dollies in the classic black coffin, and I always, so nice, let you guys see first. You guys know I love seeing um, everything done as the blind box. I like to be surprised. So everyone here at Cleveland Street's always so nice to me. And they open the dollies and they get them ready for me. And then they close the lid on them so that I don't know who it is. So I let you guys see first. Who is it? Are they beautiful? Of course they're beautiful. They're fabulous living dead dolls. And yeah! Oh my goodness! Madame La Morte, she's so so beautiful. So of course is Lady of Death. She's so beautiful. Look at how fabulous. Oh, so many great details. I can't wait to dive in. But first I want to show their cute little chip card here. If you guys notice, the Moulin Morgue is done um, kind of in the Moulin Rouge marquee style with the red and all the lights throughout the letters. I absolutely love it. So let's read her little chipboard because you know I love doing that. Death dances tonight at the Red Mill. Come grab a seat and down some swill. The bartender is pouring and blood is the flavor. It comes fresh from the victims of the Madam's Razor. Oh, very cool. Let's dive in. I can already see her fabulous hat that is just so cute. I love it to pieces. Oh my gosh, you guys. Oh, she's so beautiful. Her dress is glamorama. Okay, we're going to stop at the very tippy top here. Look at the cute little hat she has on. Oh, it's stiff, nice black velvety hat, which is this thing a little white satin ribbon that goes around it just to give it a little bit of accent there coming down she is just coated in blood she's a messy little lady she gets her razor blade out and she just slacks and slashes all over the place but look at how sweet her face is she's got this pink accenting around her eyes those beautiful velvety red blood red lips of hers and of course the little cutie beauty mark mold that she has there that we just absolutely love. I love that she's got this cute little bow tie choker right here. All the blood dripping down underneath trying to keep it together there. Oh my gosh. She's even got, oh it is, it's a little shrug. So she's wearing like a cute little jacket too. Oh I love it. That's all white satin with a great black collar sort of, or not the collar, but the cuff accent right here. And then she's got this cute, just um, kind of like a can-can like girl style dress on with a little sweetheart neckline. You know I love the great, delicate, ribbony details that come all down. Of course, splattered in blood. If she's hacking and slashing with a razor blade, she's making a mess there. And of course, just in the old kind of French style. It bells out. It's got this wonderful black kind of netting sort of lace accent over top. And then more black satiny beauty dress underneath. And then of course the fabulous Victorian style boots. Look at that double row of buttons going up the side. Can you imagine actually owning a pair of these fabulous boots? How hard and long it would take to get them on. They'd be worth it though. Totally worth it. I absolutely adore her. I kind of wish she had, she had a little razor blade or something though. I wish she had a accessories. You guys know I love accessories. And if she's known for hacking and slashing, well then she should have some accessories. Take another closer look at that great face of hers. I didn't notice before, but she's got this beautiful blue accenting this great cat eye makeup. Oh my gosh. They should give not only um, the clothes in big people size, but they should have little living dead doll makeup tutorials. I think that'd be so much fun. Someone out there I know is just as talented and fabulous and could give little makeup tutorials on how to look like our lovely Madame Morta here. So let me go ahead. I don't want to put her back in the box. What am I doing? I want her out having a good time, letting all the other ones come out and join her. So I did number two, you guys. So we'll go over here. 
Madame Morto, are you ready? So I was going to say, the Grand Guignol started um, off in Paris, and it was just like theater of the great puppet. And it started in like the 1890s, went to like 1960-some. Um, and it was just kind of a theater that was put on for, like many theaters now, for the aristocrats and for the celebrities. But it got most popular when it started doing horror-themed theatrical productions. Oh, I'm just tearing up a little thinking about how great it is. Are right, you guys ready? Number two of the Grand Morgue. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Oh my gosh. Ella Von Terra. Oh my god. You guys, she kind of reminds me of Dita Von Teese, that fabulous outfit. Can you imagine? I think Dita Von Teese could play her in a, in a Mulan Morgue recreation here. So Ella Von Terra. Knowing too much is sometimes a crime, especially when you work with society's slime. A theater of lust and gore soaked in disdain. A place where one wrong word brings more than just pain. Ooh! You can see there's something going on under that sweet veil of hers, and I cannot wait to see what it is. So we'll start, look at her beautiful hair. I love this little side sweep they've got going on, and the beautiful purple satin puffy little rose. They're so fancy. You can tell. Again, she was like a sweet can-can girl dancer. The great makeup again. Beautiful cat eye purple, just a light lavender accent. And this, she looks like one of the little Maharishi girls, the little harem girls who would do the sexy dances. And I'm going to let you see. Look underneath, you guys. <gasps> oh, my God. You clearly, she said the wrong thing to the wrong person. These big, gruesome, gross stitches over her mouth and just blood caked all over. We can, we can kind of see why she likes wearing a little mask there. And uh, the mask is, you, you're able to take it off if you want. If you wanted to pull it down the other way, you totally could. But look then, too, it goes to this great two-piece kind of can-can, uh, saloon girl style almost dress there. And this is an oh, tiny purple sequins. I've never seen sequins so little before. All sewn on, she looks absolutely beautiful. And then the great roughly long skirt here. I wish it was a little bit shorter in the front so you could see her sassy legs. Oh, oh my god, you guys, look! It is shorter in the front, just like a can-can girl. I love Again, it! Put the plastic around to try to save the coloring. Sadly, you can see on the back, though, some of the coloring kind of fades through, but that's okay. We'll keep her little clothes on. Most of you are probably going to keep her in her box anyways. And again, she's got cutie little shoes. She's got sassy little heels, little wrap around kind of wedges there. She's just gorgeous. I love her so much. Aren't you a beautiful little dancer? Yes, you are. Go stand over here by the madam. Keep her company. <gasps> you guys, I am loving this set so much. Okay, so the Grand Guignol would put on these fabulous performances and they were known for doing really great special effects, just lots of gore and blood. And uh, when it started to deal more with horror-related themes, one of the ways, I guess, that they would judge how good the show was was how many people would faint at the performance. Can you imagine? Back in the late 1800s and early 1900s, like, oh my gosh, that's stuff I want to see now. All right, you guys ready? Dun, 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 dun. Number three of the Grand Morgue is... I'm excited, you guys. Let me see. I'm not sure why they gave him that name. Probably because the orange hair, but it's like carrot dead or something when it translates. But that's okay, because look at how great he is. He's got this big pompadour that barely fits into the box. Okay, again with this great little card here. Let's read. Carrot Mort's played in the theater of gore and smashed his head on a swinging door. His final words while he lay in the backstage salon. C'est la vie! The show must go on. Oh my goodness, I love it. Man after my own heart. C'est la vie! So what as I lay here dying, the show must go on. Look at him, you guys! That hair! Oh my gosh, get out of town, you guys. He's got the best pompadour I have seen since 
I don't know, maybe Morrissey. <laughs> but okay, so we start with this great styled pompadour hair and it's super slicked back. Like it feels like it's almost one piece, but you can tell it's not. They just glued the heck out of it. Like most people do when they've got fabulous hair, you gotta stick it down a little bit. So we're gonna start with the top. Look, you can see the gash on his head. Part of me wish they had kind of like made a little divot in there, but that's okay. Um, you can tell he has smashed his head. You can tell he's not doing so good and the blood just dripping into his eyes. Great black lips, I tell you what. Makeup styles, we think alike. It's very, very chic. And he's got cute little, I'm not sure if that's supposed to be a splatter of blood or if it's cute little freckle or freckler mole. But we come down and he's got this great red satin jacket. Like it's Satan's little jacket there. Look at, he kind of reminds me of just like a vintage little schoolboy look with his cute little knickers and his great little um, jacket that he's got here. And you know I always like to peek underneath. So let's see what's going on. It's Velcro closure. Got fake little uh, pockets right there. And then, oh, look, it does look like he's just got a little schoolboy shirt and a great little gray tie. And no tattoos or nothing. I don't know, maybe seeing some tattoos there. But nothing like that. And then he's got, of course, the higher socks right here. I always love that they actually have socks. They're not painted on or anything like that. It's the really Odilio, and it just makes him so fabulous. And he's got the classic little boy shoes. Nothing too fabulous. Again, they could always... You can always go a little bit further with the boys' fashion, I think. But you look just so cute, Karen Moore. So we're going to put you over here, put you with the ladies there, and we're going to go ahead and go on to number four. Okay, so some of the um, Grand Guignol performances, like I said, they were known for making people faint, but they had really twisted and dark storylines. Like there was one where like a nanny kills a kid. Can you imagine showing these live performances? This isn't a movie. They're seeing this out live to like the bourgeoisie and the celebrities of the time. They just had to be so horrified because I'm sure a lot of them had nannies at home babysitting their kids as they were watching this. So I can see why they were probably fainting. So here we go. La, 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 number four. Let's see who it is. There was one in the series that I was really looking forward to. She was my little twin. Ah, here she is. Oh, I'm so excited. L'armée des sang, which actually means tears of blood. Ooh, so dark, so foreboding, so beautiful. Already, I'm going to tell you, she's, she's my favorite right now of the bunch. So let's see. Blood drips down from her face in rogue. Do they fall from tear, or tears or open wound in the terror real or all just part of the show? Not until you see your own will you know. Ooh, deadly voo, a little foreshadowing there of what's coming up in the show. Ah, <gasps> you guys, she's beautiful. Let me get this box out of the way so I can tear into her gorgeousness. Of course, they always put all these little ribbons around, these little rubber bands to make it hard for me to play with her hair. And I gotta get it out. I know she wants to be in full Glamorama glory for all of you. So let's go ahead, get all these rubber bands off. Oh, fluff up her hair a little bit. Oh, there's another one. Down. Ooh, she's got beautiful ringlets at the bottom. Oh, the length of her hair, I am so jealous. You guys, look at this. Ooh, it comes down past her waist. All right, she's so pretty. We can all see this fabulous star-shaped scar that she's got going on right here. So gorgeous. Beautiful orange hair. She's got a little boy, little boy counterpart over here, Karen Mort. But look, the empty eye socket is just oozing and so gross. She's got sweet little like dark pink lips, not the black lips like the other girls do, but she's Fabulous. Again, this saloon girl, vintage, um, French maid kind of uh, sassy sort of style she's got going on here. I love that they got some of the ruching, a little bit of the tooling up at the top, the lovely little um, ruffle that goes right here, teeny tiny bows, more little bows, more little bows, just so many details, you guys. This delicate, it's almost like it's hand crocheted um, to look like a lace. And then one, 
two, three, four layers of tooling on this great skirt. And underneath, it's just a little bit stiff, kind of like um, the little, most petticoats we know aren't very comfortable. So cute, so adorable. And again, she's got, she's got matching little shoes, just like a little girl over here, Ella Von Tira. So cute. I want to turn her around though so you guys can see just how fabulous her hair looks. And then in her hair, this beautiful feather fascinator. She's gorgeous. And I'm so excited that uh, she's my twin in the bunch. She's just perfectly, just like me. I had wanted to try to do my makeup like hers, but I just couldn't get a hold of the um, fake scarring makeup in time. Because you know I like the things to be authentic. And if I couldn't do the star, I just couldn't pretend to be her. So you guys, oh, we're coming to the end. It's the final one. And if you've been paying attention, you know which one's in here. So I'm going to open it up and you guys can peeky peeky too. Look at how cute he is. I love him so much. Yes! Major J. Mort, he's the best. He is the master of the dead. So cute. So fabulous. This hat. I love that a couple of them came with hats. All right, let me read this little chip card for you. I'm getting ahead of myself here. So, like a morbid MC, a prophet of doom, he welcomes you into the darkened room. Once the show starts, he will slice your smile away. Death is the cabaret, old chum. Die in the cabaret. Ooh, he is so dark and foreboding. I just love him. And oh my God. Look at him, you guys. Look at this great hat he's got. Again, same stiff, um, hey, stiff plastic, but they've got that lovely velvety velour flocking over top. Again, a single little band of black satin to go around. Look at his great hair. So super stylized. Again, I tell you what, someone with just a little bit of know-how can create the same style for themselves and make this like the coolest cosplay or Halloween costume if you want to wait for Halloween. So let's take a look. He's got great dark eyes. Oh, beautiful black lips too. Just so sassy, so wonderful. I love the jacket that he's got on. Pop his collar a little bit. It's nice. Uh, I love this down here, this detailing. Almost like he's got a little pocket watch or something like that. And what kind of Look at, pull it forward a little bit so you can see that it's jagged cut. It's not a straight cut. He's been wearing this jacket for a while. And then we'll peek over here and we'll see the great buttons that come down and the cute little bow tie. And I don't know if you guys can see, if you look real close though, it's like he's got some wounds underneath. It's got a blood splatter underneath. And I wanted to show you because ah, it looks so cool. Look at that. He put your little finger right I kind of wish I had like a pencil or something. I just spear it right through. I think when I go to display them, I might do just that. I want you guys to notice his fun pants coming down, straight black pants, great boots over here. And such a fun detailing. On the back, he's got super cute suspenders. I love they pay attention to these details because he didn't have belt loops and things like that. He's got these great suspenders going on. And again, you can see that the wound comes all the way through. I'm gonna try to lift his shirt up so you can see all the way through. Peekaboo! <laughs> You see my finger right through him. He's so fabulous. Gosh, you guys, I'm very torn. I'm not sure who's my favorite now. But look, too, you guys. They painted his nails black. He looks so cute and so fun. Oh, my gosh, you guys. I love this series. They're so awesome, so amazing. And I just, I love the detail. This hole through the chest, I don't think I've ever seen that on another Living Dead doll. I am so blown away again. Ed, Damien, you guys did it. Mensco, you did it. You created a fabulous Series 33, giving a beautiful nod to the Grand Guignol and a fun little Moulin Rouge twist. I'm so excited, you guys. I hope you like them. Have you guys ordered them yet? If not, you got to get online. ClevelandStreetNovelties.com. Get your dollies. Make sure you guys are subscribing, though. So many more great dolls are coming out. I don't want you to miss out on it. I love getting to share them with you. Always, you guys, comment below too. Tell me what you like and tell me what you didn't like and tell me what you want to see next. I want to know what your favorite doll of this collection is. Maybe if you guys are really nice, you might like dress up like them and take a picture and then I can figure out who's your favorite dolly. Or you could just type it. That's okay too. Most of all, I just want to thank you guys for joining me and letting me share all this fun with you. And I'll see you again real soon. Bye. 
Hi guys! Do you like living dead dolls, mystery minis, cool fun Funko toys, horror movies, walks in the cemetery? Me too! Make sure you guys subscribe!